Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. So I'm on a quest here to make gunmetal. Gunmetal is a specific alloy. Uh, it's a bronze. It's a mixture of copper, tin, and zinc. And it was used historically to cast cannons. They also used it for early guns, uh, but it quickly got replaced by, by iron and steel as soon as that was available. What I want to build is a uh, scaled down version of a Civil War cannon. What I don't want to build is a bomb. Basically, if I can't make my metal strong enough to act as a barrel and hold the pressure of the blast, then it's, then it's a bomb. It's something that is, is not going to project the projectile in the direction you want it to go. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm doing now is I am going to attempt to make the alloy and then I am going to do some strength testing on it. 88% copper, 9% tin, 3% zinc. My source of zinc is going to be this brass, which is 30% zinc. Uh, I've got plenty of copper. Uh, and then uh, here's my tin. So what I need is 41 grams of tin, which I've weighed that out. 45 grams of brass, which actually 30% of that is zinc. That gives me the correct 3% zinc. And then 400 grams of copper. I can pour an ingot and do some testing on it. So when you make an alloy, you want to melt the highest melting point component first, which of course is the copper, uh, at about 2,000 degrees. Then I will add the tin, and the last thing I'm going to add is the brass, because then it's going to start off-gassing zinc, which is toxic, and I don't, want to, I don't want to be breathing that. This is drossing flux. This is for copper and bronze and brass melts. What this is going to do is collect at the bottom and form a protective layer over the molten metal. As soon as the metal melts, it's going to drip to the bottom and you're going to end up with what you call the heel, uh, a rising pool of molten metal. Well, that flux is going to be floating on top of that and protecting it from the oxygen and the atmosphere so that it doesn't develop too many impurities during the melt. So here I've got my crucible with the copper and I'm, I'm adding the tin as well. The tin melts at uh, somewhere around 500 degrees but it doesn't boil until 4,000, so it's not going to do anything but sit in the bottom. It's going to be covered with that layer of drossing flux, and it's going to help dissolve the copper even before the copper gets to its melting point, because the tin and copper together has a lower melting point than the copper does. 1,830 degrees. And that's how things look in there. See how we look here. A lot of liquid in the bottom. It's very cool because I actually haven't reached the melting temperature of copper. 1928 is about the highest I've been. And the reason for that is because the copper is dissolving into the bronze. I'm preheating my brass with a propane torch just so it doesn't lower the temperature of the melt. Or at least very much. Alright, let's see if I can manage this before it gets too cold to pour. You have to work kind of fast when you have a small amount of metal like this. <laughs> I waited too long. So I put the remaining metal back in the crucible and put it back in the kiln. Then I dug out the small ingot that I did manage to pour. It was too small for testing. And I added it back to the crucible as well. So I'm going to be a little hotter this time and a little faster. Alright, I think I'm about ready for take two. So it's at about 1960 degrees, around 1830 to 50 is the melting point. So I've got 100 degrees to work with, but it cools very quickly. There's not a lot of metal in there. So I'm going to take it out, skim the dross, add the phosphor, give it a stir, pour. It says you're supposed to wait for the phosphor reaction, but if I don't see anything active, I'm going. Thank you. 
dross. There's not much dross there. So add the phosphor. Well, that was a heck of a time for my battery to die. It poured better. I'm pretty confident I got enough to make a sample. Reading 1630 degrees in there, even with the lid off. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on. No sense letting more fumes come out into my shop than need be. That hurt. The bucket that you set the lid on is going to be hot. Note to self. There you go. Now in theory it wouldn't make any difference if I quenched that, but I'm not going to just to avoid any possibility of adding stresses in the metal. I want to see how strong this stuff is. Just took it to the wire wheel. I like the color of it. it you can definitely tell it's not brass, that tin gives it a more bronze color because it is bronze. So now we need to make a test piece out of it. That's exactly three eighths, three hundred and seventy five thousandths. And then I drilled two holes in it. So let's get it loaded in the testing machine and we'll see how much it pulls. So you can see the sample right there, and this is the PSI. But we're going to calculate based on this PSI how much tensile strength the sample has. So let's see how this does and hope for the best because this is going to decide if I can cast my own cannon or not. All right. So there we are at 600. Seven, eight, only 800 PSI. 800 PSI for that is disappointing. You can also see very coarse grains in there, the way it fractured. Let me show you how much tensile strength that held. So I was just over 800 PSI, we'll say 800 machine pulls 4.324 pounds per PSI. 34.59 pounds. Now the force was divided on both sides so it only held 1730 pounds. And if none of this is making sense you should watch my video where I talk about uh, being a material scientist. It's where I I build this tensile strength tester. So it held 1,730 pounds. How many square in inches was it? Well, it's 3 8 or 375 thousandths. That's the diameter, so the radius is half of that. You square the radius, we multiply it by pi. Surface area of my sample was 0 0.110. That divided by that is my tensile strength. 1730 divided by 0 0.110. 15,700. That might sound like a lot, but it's not. That's pretty lousy. So I should be able to get between 32 and 45,000 PSI. So I'm like half of what I potentially could be on the low end. I'm not giving up just yet. I'm just going to need to figure out what I can do to my castings to make them stronger.
I really think that it is the grain structure that I'm getting. It's very coarse. Can you see how coarse the grains are in there? So I can tell you in some of my other tests, tests on auto parts, now these are aluminum of course, but it is very smooth in there. So I'm just not getting the strength that is possible in these materials. Now I don't know, are these auto parts forged? Obviously if you forge something it's stronger compared to casting. Maybe I'm being unrealistic. Maybe this is the kind of strength you do get out of a casting. I don't know. Anyone out there with some experience? Foundry worker? Engineer? Or just someone who knows what they're talking about? I'd definitely like to hear your uh, your take on it. Leave uh, leave comments below. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.